Let's talk about screen familiarization, uh, specifically the part and tool setup screens for the Herco Control. Here we see a snapshot of the part setup screen. In the upper portion of the screen, we have some digital readout information as well as some feedback information for the operator, such as spindle speed, feed rate, uh, current feed rate of the machine, and what active tool happens to be in the spindle. And we get some feedback information for the X, Y, and Z axis, their current position as it relates to either machine zero or part zero. In the bottom portion of the screen, we can see the X, Y, and Z part zero information, and these fields are teachable by the operator. He highlights the necessary field for the axis that he wants to set zero for. He then presses the store machine position button, either the F6 button on the soft keys seen on the screen, or the small gray, gray button on the hand wheel pendant. The current machine position will then be stored in the appropriate field for X, Y, or Z, thereby setting the part zero for that particular part. We have a safety work region portion of the part setup screen. This is used to build an area that we do not want the tool to be able to feed into, uh, a portion of the work envelope that we want to uh, create as a safety region. This is used for fixturing. Uh, many times a customer will have a fourth axis or a rotary indexer on the table and he doesn't want the, the axis to be capable of feeding into the area where that uh, body of the indexer, for example, may be, thereby protecting it. Those fields also are teachable. You simply jog the table to the edges of the work region that you want to uh, set the safety work region for and you teach the locations. Bottom right hand we see the XY skew in degrees. This was actually created and intended for probing. When we go in and probe for part setup we can probe a part for skew. If a part's been placed on the table and has not been indicated in we can probe it in several different points find out the skew angle that it's lying on the table that value will get stored here in the, this field and then whenever a position of X, an X position or X move is called out in the program, the actual program will be skewed by this value and we will see both an X and a Y movement to accommodate for that skew. Although this was created for probing, it is an open field to be used at any time and if the operator for whatever reason has to skew his program by a specific uh, degree then he can simply type in a value and it will work very much the same way. If the operator were to select the F7 or the more button um, that will bring up another list of menus. He can then select the very top one uh, called stock geometry and we're able to insert input some information for either a box or a cylinder type of uh, part to be used in graphic representation. On the left we see a box. We simply put the X length, Y length, and Z length of whatever raw material we're going to be cutting from. And in the right screen we see a cylinder. Uh, basically what is the length and radius of that cylinder and then we have to select a direction for what direction the body uh, would be lying in the machine. The, the cylinder length or body would be lying. That way we can tell in graphics that uh, um, what the part's going to look like. Now here's a snapshot of a tool setup screen. First of all we have the tool number. We can have 9,999 tools that we could describe in the machine. We have 27 different types of, of tools so we would pull down the tool type menu. You notice there at the far right of that second field down you see a little arrow. If we were to use our finger or the stylus that comes with the machine and click on that little arrow it would bring down a pull down menu and again there are 27 different styles or types of tools that we can select from. Other information like the diameter of the tool and the actual tool calibrated length are a couple fields that we can uh, put some information in. Obviously the tool length will be taught by use of either a probe or manually touching off the tool when it's time to uh, actually set the job up. On the right hand column there we have uh, some information for speeds and feeds. We can either enter in a direct RPM under the speed and an inches per minute feed rate under feed 
or in the case that we see here we can actually enter in a surface footage a chip load or feed per flute and number of flutes and you see that using the diameter and the surface speed it has calculated the speed or the RPM that's what the CAL means and then because of the RPM the chip load and the number of teeth it was able to calculate what the feed rate would be and you see under feed we also have a calculated value of 91.7 also indicated by the CAL next to it now by entering the information in here now as we select this tool to be used in the program our speeds and feeds should be set for us in the block. We can choose to alter those values or we can choose not to put any values in here in the tool setup and simply just put that value in the block as an RPM and a feed rate when it comes time to use this tool in the in the program. A couple other fields there, the cutting time and the diameter wear. Uh, currently cutting time is just an informational field it tracks the number of minutes that this particular tool has been used in the cut and currently we do not do anything with that information other than display it for use by the operator to keep track of on his own. The diameter wear field however if you put a value in there of plus or minus a few thousands it will adjust the diameter and this is what we can use to size the the tools for cutting. Now because we have solid model representation or solid model graphics, we need to be able to accurately describe the tools that we're using. If you see the F7 button there, we select that, the More button, it's going to bring up another set of menus. And again, if we select the very top one, Advanced Tool Settings, it brings us to a screen like the one we see here. Every tool type has a graphic representation. And as you highlight the individual fields, in this instance we have Length of Cut highlighted, you'll see a red arrow appear on the right hand side of the drawing to show exactly what it is that it's asking for. If we take the time to accurately describe our tools and our part in stock geometry, then when we hit graphics we should see a very accurate representation of what the part's going to look like when we get ready to um, cut the part. 